Alrighty y'all, welcome to Ellis Mowers. Thank y'all for watching. We're gonna go through this lawnmower here on this video. Uh, I got a trade, if y'all remember the LT1750 Limited Edition Craftsman riding mower that I had. I uh, got $500 plus this for that lawnmower, uh, the one that had the electric PTO and uh, the Kohler engine, the big hood, and um, 12 gauge steel deck. So that's that's what I got out of the deal, $500, and then this. This is a John Deere 125 automatic. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the 125s were actually sold at a dealer. Um, if anybody wants to correct me with that, basically this is like an LA. 115 or something along those lines if you bought one at the store uh, but i think this one came from a dealer let's see if there's any dealer sticker or anything on it i don't i don't see one right there usually they have the dealer sticker on them but i do not see one on this one that's all right um under the hood you can see it's a 20 horse briggs v twin engine on it don't know how many hours are on it the battery is dead um, i was told that the mower ran uh the issue that i was told apart from besides it needing a battery is that the front wheels on it were shot which is definitely the case this these wheels look bad um especially this one over here you see the bearings are out in it and actually i have the original wheels in the back of the truck here i can show you they're pretty much toast this one this one's okay it's just missing the tire it looks like but this wheel right here is definitely shot so what i'm going to do in the interim because i really want to get this thing turned around pretty quickly is actually this tire might be good i didn't check it now the bearing just shot on the inside of it or on the outside of it just like all all of them except for that wheel over there um, I've got a couple of craftsman wheels that'll fit right on this I'm gonna pop on it I'm gonna pop a battery in it and we're gonna see if we can get this thing to run and see how many hours are on it too anybody want to guess I'm gonna guess somewhere in the 400 range I'm probably overshooting it wouldn't be surprised if it has less than 300 on it which would be a big plus um, deck real quick the deck looks like looks like I just need to tighten up the front front of it and raise the front of it up. The back portion looks fine. Um, somebody's already actually done a welding job on the deck brackets on this, which is very nice. I don't have to worry about that. Pretty notorious for needing the needing welding jobs on it. Um, the deck lo belt looks to be in decent shape for what it is. Um, and take these two 10 millimeter nuts. I'm also going to take those and pull the blade engage back a little bit. Uh, blade engage cable looks like they have it shifted as far in as it'll go, so I just need to tighten that up, and that'll probably do it for the deck here. This doesn't have any of the covers left on it either, if these even came with covers. And if you watch my video on the LA105 that I did a while back, um, I actually fabricated some deck brackets. That mower sold for $500 and um, seems to be doing good. I haven't heard anything back from it. This mower in the condition will get probably, I mean, people love John Deere's even if they look bad. This lawnmower honestly will probably fetch $500 for what it is. If it doesn't fetch $500, it'll fetch every bit of $450. Remember, I have. I mean, I wanted to get $500 for that LA, or excuse me, the, the LT1750. I had it listed for six, so I knocked $100 off and got this. If I sell it for $450 and don't have a lot of money in it, y'all do the math. Um, another thing I've noticed is that the um, lever for the hydrostatic transaxle is off of it. I don't know the deal with that, but I'll find out. Um, if the transaxle moves back and forth like it should, probably won't even worry with it um, unless it's down there and I just need to bring it back up, I'm trying to find a rod and whatnot for that. But it is in the locked position. 
so it should roll they were cutting grass with it last year i guess until the wheels came off of it so i think this one's been driving full blast for how the barons come off of it you know taking turns at full speed and whatnot uh, that's kind of how they were cutting grass with it when with the new one when i sent when i um, dropped it off and they started cutting grass with it so it wouldn't surprise me all right i'll stop talking let's get a battery in it um, i'm going to swap the wheels off as well that way we can drive it around if it works and uh, i'll go ahead and tighten that deck and who knows we might have a good mower here um, also it has the typical john deere seat problems and also the uh, it's got full oil in it. Oil's pretty clean, so I don't know how the air filter is. We can check that too while we're at it. That little dipstick doesn't go on very tightly, but it stays, I guess. Let's see what we've got here. Got a lot of at the time of filming, which I film, you know, film my stuff in advance for the videos of the mowers that I fix and whatnot. Um, things are pretty much leaving as fast as I can get them ready. So, I'm we'll trying to do a quick turnaround on this as long as it doesn't need any parts. Hopefully, it doesn't need any blades. Hopefully, I can use the blades that I got and be all right. I don't know why that one won't come off. Just need a little encouragement, I think. There we go. Air filter. A little dirty, I can beat it off. I can work with that. So, blades. They're a little chewed up. Are they on backwards? No, they're not on backwards. They're a little chewed up, but I think I can deal with them. Let me look under and see what the rest of them look like. I think that one over there is bent. The one on the left over there. I think it's bent down a little bit. Let's see. like it is yes yeah, definitely bent down but the good news is I have a let me show y'all it's bent down a little bit you see the difference there in the deck um, and the spindle it's a little off but it's not that bad um, I do have one good blade. I'll check the blades and everything before I take care of this mower. Um, spindles. See, this one's bent down a little bit, so I guess that must be a common John Deere problem. These spindles get bent in some. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of little spacers in it in the spindle, too. See if I can get it just to recess down a little bit and uh, hopefully it'll cut alright um, I don't know why these spindles do that though anyways uh, let me do a couple quick things and we'll see if we can get this thing started alright so I replaced the battery and now I have 12.49 volts going to the battery the other battery that was in here because I needed a left positive and I've only got two batteries that are left positives, and one of them was the one that came in here. It's from 2018. I've got 12.49 volts to the starter solenoid. So as long as the circuit gets completed with the ignition switch, it should run. The other one, I think, was down to the high 11s. So these things don't really like to crank if they have less than 12 volts in the battery. So let me get some of the tools out of the way here. We'll set y'all down. I'll hop on the mower and see if I can get it cranked. 
I've noticed that you have to actually press the parking brake in, even past the parking brake, or it won't fire up, or at least in the past. Now if I push the parking brake in. It's quiet. I think both cylinders are firing. It just seemed like it was down on power a little bit. Then they didn't even smoke. Um, so like I said, the seat switch or the um, park brake switch is a little wonky on it. Um, I don't know if there's any bending or finagling I can do in order to get it fixed right. It's all up under there, so I probably won't even worry with it. Where is it? It's right there. Right over there. But I'll save that battle for uh, another time. Let's let's see if this thing will even run. Oh yeah, look at how many hours this thing's got on it. It'll show it here in a second. y'all can see that 867 867 that's crazy let's see if it moves it moves she's walking a little bit though Got a little slop in the... Yeah, it's got a slop in the tie rods for the bushings. Which is pretty anticipated for a lawnmower of this eight or this many hours, especially a John Deere. Might have to look in that, we'll see. Think a thing will cut grass? very unimpressive let's go for a little drive how are they using this thing my goodness
The motor runs real good to have that many hours on it. Holy moly. Okay. So what we have determined is that the front end is basically shot on this thing. Because as soon as you pull forward, it pulls out. What I could possibly do... It's just got a ton of play in it. With bush, probably with bushings and whatnot. Let me just look. I think that, oh, excuse me, I think the bolt just might be loose for the steering here. I might just need to tighten that up. Down there. Uh, well, somebody put them E3 spark plugs in this thing. Surprisingly, the valve covers aren't leaking really bad. I wonder where the date code on this motor is. I'm wondering if it's the original engine to the to the tractor. BG, let's see. Oh, it's probably on the valve cover. 0509 23 used to be a 05. I can't find the manufacturer sticker from John. This thing. But it should. Should be the original motor on it. The engine looks oddly clean though. Um missing a couple of washers on the axle here. Let's see if I can source a couple of them. Like it's got over here. Grease them obviously. Hey, it runs. Like I said, the park brake's a little wonky on it. What I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna grab an impact and get up under there and see if I can tighten up the steering a little bit and that might eliminate the play that we've got because I'm looking at the bushings and it doesn't look bad it looks like the actual play in the steering is what's giving me the plowing effect and what that's going to do with the plowing effect is going to wear these wear these things right back out again these bearings on the wheels so um, let me get under there and let me see if I can tighten it up and then we'll see if that releases any of the play in the steering. Also, I, did some, I didn't do something that I mentioned I was going to do and that is tighten this belt spring up or this cable up with those 10 mils. So I'm going to do that off camera too. It runs. It's worth much more than well, you know what I was <laughs> what I got it in anyways. I get it running and cutting it's worth 300 bucks as it sits even with the plowing steering and you know the whole since this whole John Deere deal um, so let me do those two things real quick and I'll let you know how it goes so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the deck off of this it's very it's only a five point deal here one Two right there, three on the back right here, and it hooks up right there, and the same two on the other side. And so now I can pull the deck out. What we're gonna do actually first is pull this cable around this pulley on top of it pull this out that gives us access to this spring and all we got to do is disconnect the spring from the deck which is probably the least fun of the whole deal here because you gotta like probably need two hands and bend it a certain way okay and then we'll slide it out always fun to try and do
Let me grab some. Let me just work, try and work this off here. Tell you what, I'll let you know instead of wasting camera time how I get that spring off. I've done a few of these and they're not that easy. So let's see what we can do here. And uh just probably just have to bend it a little bit and I'll catch back up with y'all in just a second. Alright, so I got it off with uh all I did was take these angle pliers and pull them up and I was able to pull the spring out of the hole. So now we should just be able to slide it off of here. The reason why I did this also make sure that you oops get the cable bound up. Just about pinch my fingers. Okay, you can just pop your cable right up here somewhere. And uh as you can see I'll clean out the deck and whatnot. The deck so I have 867 hours this deck is pretty darn good. As you can see this somebody has welded the mess out of these brackets at some point and they're actually all welded on like they're supposed to be there's a small hole in that one but the rest of it is solid as a rock so i'm not even gonna worry with it um from where somebody has previously done that job this deck is in better shape than the la 105 that i had that had 160 hours on it paint wise it's not but uh, cosmetic condition wise it's better um, these did not budge so I'm gonna get an impact and a 10 millimeter and we're gonna take those off 10 millimeter might have to get the big impact out sometimes these things take a little bit of extra gusto but I didn't want to break them They probably haven't moved for the entire time that the they've had the mower so and it wasn't even cutting grass because the the deck belt was too stretched out on it and the and the deck's too low on the high setting too from where i guess it's hit and bent it down or whittled its way out over the course of time so let me get those two bolts out pull that out and then we'll get under the tractor and we'll see if we can address this whole plowing steering issue that we've got all right so let me show you what it's doing and why it's doing it <laughs> at least i think you can see the gears kind of worn here the thing's still steering i'm not worried about the steering aspect of it i am worried about the amount of play look at the gear here or the um i guess the plate the steering plate this is the gear the gear ain't even got a nut on it. I can't believe it's... Well, I guess that's the way that it's supposed to be. I guess it screws up there and locks in or something. I don't know. Anyways, wish I... you see how much movement is in that mechanism? And you can also see the amount... I don't know if you can see it, but the amount of wear on the actual steering plate itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to see i don't think there's any tightening that up i might try and tighten this nut up right here to see if it will go in any further and if it does and kind of tighten this pivot point up some because that's what's causing the plow is that it's pivoting outward and it's causing the It's causing the whole tractor to move and whatnot. So let me see if I can tighten this up. I'll grab the impact. I'll let you know the results. I think that's either nine. I think it's either nine sixteenths or five eighths. I don't think I can do anything with that one. Let me see what I can do with the front one here. So I tried it. It did tighten up a little bit, but there's no really no wiggle room on it. 
Um, as you can see, there's a decent amount of tow out. Especially, well, it could be on either side. It just kind of depends because there's a little bit of play in the wheel. Because you see, if I, once I do the once I do that, then it's pretty straight. But I can just pop it, pop the wheel there, and it'll tow right back out. So I think my approach is I've done this before on a Craftsman. The John Deere setup is a little bit different, but I'm going to do, y'all might think I'm crazy, but I'm going to take the steering arm off here. So it's like you got a three quarters holding it on right there and probably a nine sixteenths or a five eighths right there. Probably a five eighths. I'm going to take those off, those nuts off. I'm going to take this side off. I'm just going to take one side off and I'm going to bend it. I'm going to bend it in so that it'll sit more like this. I really don't care if it sits cockeyed going backwards. What I want it to do is track straight when I'm going forward. So we're going to try that. I'm going to get that nut off and that nut off. It's a little difficult to film under the tractor here. Get those two nuts off and then I'll meet y'all. <laughs> I'll meet y'all at my bend, um, bending area over here. I might try the vise first. I don't know. I've got a wood table with the vise. I don't know how well it's going to bend. And we will uh, see if we can bend this in a little bit. Alright, let me make an amendment to what I just said. Uh, you want to hit the three quarters on the top here. And the three quarters on the bottom down here, which I've already taken the nut off. And then they're splined. They're splined on the inside, so you can just remove them. I think the splines might be a little worn on this. But what we're going to do, I think the trailer is going to be the easiest thing. I, this trailer cost me like 500 bucks about five or six years ago. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bend, try and bend this in a little bit. So let's see what we can do here. It's pretty hard, I know that. And it wants to bend the other way, so let's see if I can bend it. We essentially just need to shorten it some. That thing right there is hard as a rock. Uh, let me figure out what I want to do here. If I want to throw some heat to it, see if I can bend it back that way. Or, I don't know if bending this is an option either. I'll see what I can come up with and I'll let you know what I end up doing to try and bend it. This is kind of like a trial and error deal here. All right, so let me show you. We still got some play in this thing, but I've got it pulled all the way out. You can see that the toe is a lot better, a lot better. I can't pull this wheel out any more than it is. When I pull this wheel in like that, you see, I do have a little bit of toe in. That's going to happen when it's in reverse. Like I said, the most important thing is when it's moving forward, I want it to track straight. So this is basically when it's moving forward. How does it look? It's pretty close. I could maybe get it a little bit better. I might could bend this side in a little bit. But I'll tell you what I did. And it's very risque. Or very whatever you want to call it. So I tried the um, trailer over here. Tried the vise. The vise isn't nowhere near as good. Those are some strong arms. So I've got my big trailer here that still has these mowers on it because I haven't quite gotten to them at the point of filming this video. I took the arm, stuck it under here, and stuck it on the block there. You can see where the indent was where I had it on the 4x4 block. <laughs> and then I jacked the trailer down on it and ended up bending it back. And so 
the arm is slightly bent we're going to make sure that it turns all the way to the left and all the way to the right without any issues which i'll just take this stuff off right now these are my mountain points actually i think i got an axle washer or two not that one i think i had an axle washer on this side it got misplaced maybe not I'll have to find an axle washer to put on that axle right there just so it doesn't stress out the E-clamp and pop it off. Uh, that makes sense as to why the all the bearings in the front wheels are worn out now. Alright. I wonder if my parking brake problem's any better. No. Park, push the park brake down. Let's crank her up. So I just went forward. Can you see the wheels? Look at this side. Look at this side. Let's turn. All right, we're not plowing anymore. That's good. That's a lot better. So much better. Again, when I go backwards, it will do some camber in, which I'm not concerned about because not many people are going to drive their lawnmowers backwards for a long duration of time. I just want this thing to run straight forwards, as you can see. Straight, straight. If, he, if he even so much, it might be a little bit cambered in. I'm not concerned about that. So while I got it out, and these things are bad about plowing a little bit when you turn. That's one of the weak points on these John Deere's. I'm glad that the transaxle still works. Usually the transaxles will go at this many hours on it. vibrates quite a bit on low idle but it is a v-twin not an opposed twin so they're not going to be nearly as smooth that muffler must be one heck of a muffler to keep this thing quiet i will check i can't tell if it's running on one cylinder or not um when i get the deck back on it which i'm about to do i'm gonna clean off all this gray you know you know you got one that's been sitting when it's just been growing grass on the deck but i'm gonna get this deck on with the with the new um new deal here with the tensioner and see i want to see if it actually will fire up the blades and run them like it like it's supposed to this one has blade guides on this side which it usually is missing or which uh has been missing this side i thought used to have a cover it no longer has a cover We'll see if it stays like it's supposed to. If it does, we won't worry about welding any valve guides and stuff on it. I'm trying to get this thing turned around quick. Because um, at the time of filming, I'm dealing with the whole coronavirus stuff. Is it even going to be viable for people to come get lawnmowers and things like that? Um, trying to sell this one by the end of the week. Although y'all won't see this video until May, so... Who knows what it'll be like at that time. Hopefully it's a lot better than it is here at the end of March. I think that's all I need to do under the mower. What I want to do now is I'm, I just want to mock the deck back up. And I might go ahead and adjust the front nut to raise it a little bit since it was sitting so low. And then we will see if we have good blade coverage and whatnot. All the spindles... That, one's a little, that bearing's a little loud, but I'm not really concerned about that. Um, and all that's good. I will take this deck back off, clean it, and paint it later on. So, uh, we'll do that. We'll mock it up, and I think I'll end part one. And we'll start on part two here uh, pretty shortly uh, after I see if I can get this thing cutting. 
All right, so since I like safety switches at all possible, I've done a little troubleshooting. And it won't crank with the park brake down unless you push it all the way forward. Now, I push it all the way forward, let the park brake off. Now what I'm gonna do, let me show you all this. So I'm gonna take the back mechanism out of where the parking brake attached to the transaxle and just leave it on the side there. Now, let me put the park brake back on. And in theory, no, it didn't do it this time. I thought it was gonna crank. It's right on that, it's right on that borderline of wanting to start. Cause I can't quite get the park brake down far enough to stay. So there's one or two things I can do here. I could in essence add maybe some tape or something to the end of this. I'm not quite sure. Maybe some I'm not quite sure what I could do because that's this plastic piece for the switch here is the way that it is for a reason. What I could also do is well that might be the best option actually find something to go on the end of the switch or bend that parking shoe in there a little bit. If I could bend that in, you see where it's moving? Right there, back there in the back. I wonder if I could disconnect the battery, get up under there with a pair of pliers and bend that thing in. Because all I need to do is have a better connection with the, the button here. So let me take the battery out real quick so I can get a pair of pliers down there and I'm going to see if I can bend that thing in inward toward me and at least so it would connect on better on one side because I don't want to have to bypass this switch I mean the switch is good so let me get the battery out and then we'll uh, I'll see what I can do with it so let me show the orientation of the switch I've got the ohm meter hooked up here and the orientation of the switch on the mower is like this so when you put it on you put it in that little gap there and I'll show you, I have, the, I have it on the two bottom leads. I couldn't tell you what's what. Um, I guess this, this is a closed switch system, and, and it opens the switch. Because you do that, you see that whenever I push the button in, it goes from no ohms or no resistance, and now it uh, doesn't have any connectivity. So that'll tell me when I pop it back onto the mower here. And I was able to take some big pliers. I don't know where those are at. Um, obviously my garage is still a mess at the time of filming this. So we'll pop this back in. Remember the two bottom terminals. Let me get my alligator clips over here. And my multimeter. The multimeter is more important than the alligator clips. I can... All right, so let's see what we got. I love to get this because this is kind of critical to so that you can start it when you're not on the tractor. That way it's going to help me diagnose even better. So on bottom, right, bottom two terminals, pop the switch in before I try it. No resistance. All right, so parking brake. All right, we put the parking brake down. You see that... I have infinite now, so the switch is working. The switch is working now in this position. After I took pliers and um, bent that in a little bit, you don't want to bend it in too much because you see where I'm hitting it on the switch here. You see I, work, I was able to work it back out. It's right on the edge. It is so close to the edge there. Because if you pop it out enough, you see where it's...
But if you just ease off of it, and I don't know if because it pops it over to the right now. It's right on that edge. Oh man. So let me see what I can do. Because you see it's it's closed right now, but if I press it down and then let off very easily, it'll stay open. But if I just do that, so it's like right on that edge. Um I wish it didn't spring back that much, but I don't think I have I don't think there's any way of getting around that. Okay, let me do a little bit more work here and see what I can finagle. See if there is a point where I can uh, zip tie this somewhere because that's the issue is that the little plastic piece is worn out and it's rocking the switch back and forth on it. So I don't know if there's like an area that I can just route a zip tie to to keep it attached there. I might try going around the side there and see what happens. I'm just trying to zip it, zip tie it. Um, hmm. Because I've got a little, I think I could go right here and it will be okay. So let me see if I can throw a zip tie on this thing. Hmm, because I don't have any attach point on that side though. I have the clip here for the actual switch. That I can put in there. Like that. But how do I keep it from doing that number is the question. Let me play around with what I got because you see it's doing that, but it's coming back too far on the park brake. Let me see if I can play around with that a little bit and see if I can get it right, and I'll let you know the results. Alrighty, y'all, trial and error. So what I'm going to do, I drilled a little bitty hole right where the mount is, not on the switch. You know better not to do it on the switch. The little plastic mount. <clears throat> I'm going to pop this back in. Let's see if I can, I might have to drill it a little bit further out than I've got it, but let's see, let's see if this works. Oh, this all of a sudden got a lot more difficult than it was. There we go. Yeah, I got to drill it a little bit further out, darn it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drill it out, and then I'm going to put a zip tie around it through the hole and then put the zip tie around it and so around the front so hopefully that'll hold it let's see what we let's see what i can do here with this all right let me see you all see how i did the zip tie there so what i did with the zip tie is i came under it and so i routed it yeah let's see if i can get better light here for you i routed it under the switch through the hole up through the hole for the metal piece there on the bottom side up through the hole that I drilled over the top piece of this metal bracket and then around and so what it's doing is it's preventing it from shifting to the across there and now if I hook up my trusty 
free Harbor Freight multimeter. I used to live in the state, y'all notice that Harbor Freight's not giving these away anymore. All right, infinite resistance. Remember, park and brake is down. Now we have nothing. Infinite. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Infinite resistance, right? So now, in theory, I plug this in with the park brake down, which is like that. Should crank up. Ooh, let me get those pliers off there. <laughs> It'll crank up if I put a battery in it. <laughs> let me put the battery in it and then we'll test it out. Oh, I got me scared for there for just a second. All right, so the deck's still a little bit lower than I want it to be in the front. Yeah, a little bit lower than I want it to be in the front. I've still got to do some adjustments on it. But, for all intents and purposes, let's see. I've got tension on the deck belt there, so let's see if we can get this thing to start. Well, we know it's going to run, but... So the park brake works. <laughs> movement of the blades too so I might have jumped in a little too far it's weird because it was just moving I don't know what I did to it I wonder if I didn't put this back on oh that's it Put that back on. Oh, well. I think it's only running on one cylinder, anyways. Uh, let me put this back on then. with the cotter pin, which I put it right here. Oops, I'll be why it wouldn't move. There we go. All right, so obviously this just jumped the belt, so that's that's promising. Go ahead and raise this up again. These belts are so loose whenever they. That pulley is a little wobbly, so we'll see. We'll see if that's doing anything. Let's see what we got when we pull it out here. 
Will it even? This will cause the belt to jump. It just doesn't have blade brakes. I'd actually tighten it up a little too much. That's no biggie, we'll fix it. Last thing I'm gonna do here. Get some insulated pliers. I just felt it. So we're running only only one cylinder. Which is what I kind of suspected. So now let me put that clip back in for the fuel line. I'll put that fuel line clamp back on too. That way that it's away from the spark plug. We can put the spark plug wire back in like it's supposed to be. So I think we've got a bad plug on one side. I think, let's see. All right, we got a bad plug on one side. Um, I do have to do a little bit of adjustment to the deck because it's still spinning the blades even though I have the blade. The blade's off. These things are notorious for wearing out the springs on the pulleys too. Ugh. I'll have to bend them back, I guess. One of them's missing the blade break, so it's just gonna have to be the way that it's gonna be. Uh, so part two, we're going to figure out why it's only going to run on one, or why it's only running on one cylinder. We have it running, and we have it cutting. It's not doing either of them great right now. Moves, drives, all that good stuff. So um, let me clean up the garage a little bit. We're going to hit part two on this in the, in the um, next time. And I appreciate y'all watching. If y'all want to see real-time updates of what I'm working on, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at LSMowers09. I'll catch y'all next time.